Can you save the planet with a simple letter? That is the question we are asking today. So the founder of Patagonia, the clothing company, is giving away the company to save planet Earth. So a little bit of background. Yvon Chouinard, the founder of Patagonia, literally said he's giving away the entire company to support environmental causes. And he announced this in a letter on Patagonia.com, which is linked in the description below if you want to read the original source. But I've copied it into this document. Now, before you get fired up, I'm not saying this is a good decision. I'm not saying it's a bad decision. I'm just analyzing the quality of writing. That's it. So I will assign a score at the end of the video. So stick around if you want to see where it comes in. So this is what we are going to learn from Yvonne Chouinard's letter, how to make a stand for a cause without actually grandstanding or preaching and how to present a powerful long-term vision to your employees and to your customers. So this is the first part of the letter. And as you're going to see, each slide has like a different paragraph and eventually we will make our way through the entire thing. So it starts with Earth is now our only shareholder. If we have any hope of a thriving planet, much less a business, it is going to take all of us doing what we can with the resources we have. Now, this is an unbelievable dramatic opening and it tells us Patagonia is not playing around. In fact, I mean, I don't know who wrote that line. If you wrote that line, you deserve an award because that is just brilliant. Even if the rest of the letter wasn't very good, it would be worth it just for the line Earth is now our only shareholder. Absolutely brilliant. And by saying, if we have any hope, that raises the stakes. And raising the stakes is going to be a consistent theme through this letter. So let's move on. So next he says, I never wanted to be a businessman. I started as a craftsman making climbing gear for my friends and myself, then got into apparel. As we began to witness the extent of global warming and ecological destruction and our own contribution to it, Patagonia committed to using our company to, to change the way business was done. So he's doing two things here. First, he's humanizing himself and he's describing himself as a craftsman and not just another money obsessed entrepreneur. And second, instead of grandstanding, he's making a damaging admission. He's saying that Patagonia has contributed to these problems. And this is a major credibility builder because instead of trying to seem high and mighty and perfect, he's saying, hey, we've done some things wrong too, and we want to be part of the solution. So this is just fantastic so far. Next, if we could do the right thing while making enough to pay the bills, we could influence customers and other businesses and maybe change the system along the way. Now, if, if you note, he says, maybe change the system. And this shows modesty, not grandstanding. He's not trying to ram everything down our throats. And again, not making it seem like, you know, he's this almighty being. He's saying maybe change the system. Modesty. This is great. Next, we're on to, we started with our products using materials that cause less harm to the environment. We gave away 1% of sales each year. We became a certified B Corp and a California benefit corporation writing our values into our corporate charter so they could be preserved. More recently, in 2018, we changed our company's purpose to we're in business to save our home planet. So Patagonia is showing evolution in its dedication to the environment, and he's presenting the, the mission in even more clear terms. We're in business to save the planet. Very specific, very simple. Love it. Next, while we're doing our best to address the environmental crisis, it's not enough. We needed to find a way to put more money into fighting the crisis while keeping the company's values intact. So this is just Patagonia raising the stakes. They're not settling for good enough. Let's move on. Next, one option was to sell Patagonia and donate all the money but we couldn't be sure a new owner would maintain our values or keep our team of people around the world employed. Now, this is great because Patagonia is just finding another way to raise the stakes by saying the mission must go on forever. And this is also fantastic for um, both recruiting new employees and keeping existing ones happy because they're sending this very positive message that Patagonia will remain intact maybe forever, which is great. Now we have another path was to take the company public. What a disaster that would have been. Even public companies with good intentions are under too much pressure to create short-term gain at the expense of long-term viability and responsibility. So once again, Patagonia is displaying long-term commitment to saving the environment. They're also setting themselves apart from other large companies because it seems like every company today says they're environmentally friendly. You know, whether it's true or not, that could be argued. But Patagonia is basically saying, no, no, we're taking this even more seriously than companies that claim to. So it's always long-term, long-term, long-term. Now we have, truth be told, there were no good options available. So we created our own. Instead of going public, you could say we're going purpose. Instead of extracting value from nature and transforming it into wealth for investors, we'll use the wealth Patagonia creates to protect the source of all wealth. Now, once again, back to the same theme, long-term commitment to saving the environment. And I should have written this on the slide, but 
um, by identifying the earth as the source of all wealth, it's by definition something that needs to be protected. So again, just fantastic persuasion throughout. Now we have some language that um, you could pause this if you want, but you know th th this is just sort of repetition long term where you know defending nature, nothing really too interesting here. But again, if you want to read it, just um, just just pause the video. Okay, so the letter is going to close out pretty soon. There's just two more slides, and then we'll get to the full analysis. Um, by the way, if you if you've enjoyed this video, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, always appreciated. So let's go on. It's been nearly 50 years since we began our experiment in responsible business and we are just getting started. If we have any hope of a thriving planet, much less a thriving business 50 years from now, it's going to take all of us doing what we can with the resources we have. This is another way we found to do our part. Now, just getting started and our part, again, shows modesty and restraint because people often associate environmentalists with being a little extreme, a little in your face. And this is a more subtle approach. And all of us doing what we can just raises the stakes again and makes it seem like an important issue. Now, this is going to be the, the final part of the letter, and I think it's a great ending. So despite its immensity, the Earth's resources are not infinite, and it's clear we've exceeded its limits, but it's also resilient. We can save our planet if we commit to it. So save our planet is a clear, simple mission, and you know, good writing is always clear and simple, and we can ends with a positive note, which is, it's always good to end on a positive note. Now, what did Yvonne do wrong? I'm going to argue pretty much nothing. I mean, this was more or less flawless execution. Whoever wrote it did a fantastic job. Now, I think you could argue maybe that he should have tried to persuade people from the other side. But remember, this is about the future of Patagonia. And I feel like people on the other side wouldn't care either way. So, I mean, in terms of like nailing the message for your audience, namely Patagonia customers, Patagonia employees, you know, he stuck the landing beautifully. And let's just like go over the lessons quickly. So what did he do right? So first, the writing was clear. It was easy to understand. The opener was just amazing. Earth is now our only shareholder. I mean, the, you know, that's like Hall of Fame level writing. Just picture perfect. Whoever wrote that, you know, you're a genius. Amazing job. He, he presented a simple, powerful, and clear long-term vision to customers and employees, raised the stakes little by little throughout the letter, and did not grandstand or preach, which is probably the thing people dislike most about environmentalists. So let's go to the final score. Want to guess what it is? Write in the comments. Let me know what you think the final score was. And here it is. 93 out of 100. Just per almost perfect. So, guys, if you like this video, I'm going to be doing a lot more writing analysis videos. So I hope you like, comment, subscribe. You know what to do. More writing videos coming soon. Talk to you later. Bye.